Hi Lily. Hello. Thank you so much for letting us into your studio today. It's an absolute pleasure. It seems like you've been spending quite a lot of time here recently. Yeah, I mean I've been here, I think I rented it, started renting it about two and a half years ago. Um, and yeah, I probably spend, you know, 60, 70% of my time here. We're here today to talk about the fear. Mm -hmm. Which is obviously, it's nearly 10 years since you released that. But it feels like it still has so much resonance today. Thank you. Yeah, it's... um. Yes, it's, it's pretty mad that it's been 10 years, actually. It feels like only yesterday. It's funny, actually, because at the time when I, when I wrote it, it was you know, meant to be sort of like quite tongue-in-cheek and sarcastic, but it feels like quite literal now. It kind of came out before everybody got quite so obsessed with Twitter and Instagram. Mm. Um, and listening back, it feels like those themes still click together. I definitely had MySpace at that point in time, and maybe just started on Twitter. But Instagram was not, you know, didn't was not invented yet. I don't think. Um, yeah, and I think the yeah the Instagram way of life is is basically what I was talking about. Can you remember the writing of it? What inspired it? Where you were? Um, I was in um, a really like tiny little like two bedroom cottage in um, Morton in Marsh, I think, which is a little Cotswold, sleepy Cotswold village. Um, and me and, or oh, sorry, Greg Kirsten, who wrote the song with me, rented this cottage to start writing the second album um, after, you know, the first one, All Right Still. So, um, yeah, it was just me and him in this little cottage. And I remember, like, the living room was really just tiny, just had like this one sofa in it and then Greg was in the room next door on the piano and I just sort of would sit on the sofa um, writing lyrics to whatever he was playing but we weren't even really sort of in the same room actually and it was really it was really funny actually because the, there were like a bunch of kids from the local village that had cottoned on to the fact that we were in this cottage and we like, had to close all of the curtains and sort of like hide and and I would be singing this, <laughs> singing stuff with my headphones on and then they'd start singing it back and you could actually, early demos, you could hear um, yeah, the kids outside singing, singing it back. It was, it was pretty funny. Yeah. There were some people who, in the kind of the reviews of the song at the time, were using, uh, looking at the fear and saying, oh, this is her reaction to mass celebrity culture and mm. becoming famous so quickly. Is there an element of truth to that at all? Is that what you were doing? No, actually, I don't think I was. I think it was more just like observation about the way in which, you know, people were communicating with each other and where, you know, I spent a lot of time on the internet, which I still do. Um, but, you know, then I was spending a lot of time on MySpace and, you know, I guess just starting to get to know Twitter. And in its sort of like infancy social media, it felt quite liberating and like, oh, here's finally a medium in which we can express ourselves quite freely. Um, and then it felt like quite immediately, it became quite false. Um, and I think I, I think the fear was my reaction to the, the falsehoods associated with it. Of course, it kind of made a stir. You were one of the few political pop stars of the time, or you're not even political, but saying things about society around us. Mm -hmm. um, it feels like you're still going to be doing that on your new album, right? Actually, no, the new record is um, like quite inward looking. I think that maybe because I've you know, exhausted my political voice on social media um, over the past few years, that people have made it quite clear they don't even really like me talking about it in that form, so I'm not going to put it in my music. I think this, this record is, um, is about me, it's about my divorce, it's about my relationship with my children, and it's, it's quite... Um, emotional you know it's not it's not so much social observations it's more observations about myself confronting some some stuff i love the record so much i'm so proud of it it was really hard to make i know in myself that it's the best record that i am able to make at, at this particular juncture in my life so um you know i'm just really excited to share it with people i think that it it's not what people will be expecting i think that people will be expecting the fear point two i do feel like people have like quite an extreme reaction to the fact that I like to share my opinions about the world that we live in, which is weird because that's basically what art is. <laughs> um, but uh, I feel like sometimes people like to put me in that box, you know, she's a political pop star, political musician or whatever, and maybe it's without really intending to, um, this record is, <clears throat> you know, some, 
I find it quite hard to listen to people's views about the world unless I can connect to them as a person. And I think that's maybe what this record does. Is it says I'm, you know, a real person with real feelings and empathy and pain and sorrow. And you know, it's because of these things and my experiences that you know I want to be a part of other, helping other people through their experiences. So yeah, no, it's, I'm, I dare say it will. Yes. <laughs> um, thank you so much for having us yes, and um, casting our minds back a decade. We can return firmly to the future now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you.